We're here in Chicago at the uh, annual conference of ISTE, which is the International Society of Technology for Education. And with me is Michael Cohen, the uh, tech rabbi who is known as the designer, the educator, creativity, and instigator. So that, that's a long list. Now, he has just come from being the keynote speaker at this 22,000 uh, attendee conference. So that was probably a, a big challenge for you to prepare for that. This ought to be easy. <laughs> you know, I, I, th I think for me the struggle isn't, it's not the crowd. Yeah. Even though that was a small village inside. <laughs> it was the, my, my desire to provide meaning and value for others. Yeah. And so it could be a video that I create that will get one view. Uh -huh. Or it can be something that 100,000 people see. Uh -huh. Is it going to be of value and, and have meaning for others so that they can do something? Okay, okay. Well, I, I know you've written, you're the author of books, you've read many books, and they all have changed your life. But technology is really going to change everybody's life in ways that is really unpredictable. Um, what we see happening now with you know, apps and how you acquire knowledge and what you do with that knowledge has empowered students and adults in ways that are just hard to really predict. What yeah. do you see the future being for technology and education? I get excited about the future. I, I see artificial intelligence and mixed reality and all of these, you know, incredibly exciting, uh -huh terms, uh -huh. you know, and maybe we see something on a tech blog or we see a video, you know, a Google conference or right. something where they become a bit more real, uh -huh. but still removed from education. But ah. what will happen, and it's happening quicker and quicker at every step of the, the evolution of technology since, you know, the, the early 2000s is that our students are going to be forced to become creative because that will be the only differentiator between us and where AI is heading. Mm -hmm. Because AI can mimic, mm -hmm. it can strategize, and it can implement. Mm -hmm. But it can't look at something and, and see the soul mm -hmm. in it. Mm -hmm. Can't see how to be empathetic. Mm -hmm. A robot will never have empathy. It can mimic it, it can be programmed to, this is, this is empathetic behavior. But empathy is a uniquely human characteristic. Mm -hmm. And I just see that the more we practice that now, where our students are looking at how their education, the knowledge and the skills that they gain uh -huh. are going to be part of the tool set and the way of, of their, their mindset mm -hmm. of helping others is what's going to allow the world to, to prosper. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, when. You when we look back from, say, 10 years from now, look back to today, I'm sure we're going to look at today and say, this was pretty fundamental, the things that we're doing, and we think they're cutting edge. So with IA, I can just imagine just three, five, 10 years what it's going to be. It's just going to be really hard to, to predict the yeah. outcomes that yeah. affect everybody. Well, I, I, was, I was sitting backstage with Andy Weir, which was like uh -huh. a, a nerdy moment for me. Yeah. You know, he's, he's a you know, computer scientist, yeah. he's an author of science yeah. fiction, yeah. and he, he was sharing some pretty interesting perspectives around uh, the AlphaGo Google uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, AI machine uh -huh. that beat the, uh, the, the top players in this game yeah. called Go. And chess is easy because chess is, let's say, 20, 30, maybe 40 moves in yeah, the midst of yeah. the game. Uh -huh. Go, at any moment, can have 300. My gosh. So the way that they, they won was they looked at the footage of thousands of games of Go and uploaded millions of images. So the AI system won, but didn't know how it won <laughs> and couldn't tell the engineer team how it won. Uh -huh. So now it takes a team of computer scientists, and I'm sure many other fields, wow. to figure out what just happened. And I said to him, I was like, it's almost like we will have a, a moment in time where there will be doctors of robots, of AI, 
that that will actually become a field. Uh, Neuroscientists yes. and medical professionals yes. actually trying to understand the robot brain. Uh -huh. So it's, it's incredible, and it's insane that that is here and not something that is you know, 2030. Right, it's, right. It's now. Right. Well, what always fascinates me is the impetus for change. What really created change? Now, technology is going to affect people's lives in different ways, but what affected your life to take you on the path that you're on right now? What got you on this path? When I was in fifth grade, so I'm 33 years old, don't ask me to do math on, uh, on camera right now, but I was in fifth grade and my, my grandparents were not well and traveling was not easy for them. Huh. And my father, who's always been tech savvy, purchased, you know, this is, this is you know, like the mid 90s, yeah. this video conferencing setup that was this <laughs> camera that sat on top of our big screen TV, which was this thick, Right. Yeah, yeah, that's right, the projector. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And it connected to the phone. So the phone was live, and the video through the phone line split was 45 seconds delayed. <laughs> and it was, hi, Michael. <laughs> and it was this weird experience That was a me. modem. <laughs> yeah, 14K modem. Yeah, yeah. And... It created a moment for me where I said that technology, and I, I didn't think that it then, but yeah. I, I look back. <laughs> technology showed me that it's not about the device. Uh -huh. It's about the connection and the relationships uh -huh. and the collaboration that can be fostered and created because of the tools that we have.